folks and welcome to today's video which is an unboxing and a build video. So I'm going to be unboxing the kids robotics motorized robot head and I'm also going to be assembling it and trying this out. Now we've already done the uh the motorized robot hand and we uh well you did that and you really enjoyed it didn't you i did enjoy it yeah. yes and i i found it quite fun to play around with afterwards in programming it with the little pegs we'll just give you a quick blast of the assembled hand it's only tapping one finger at the moment because the last thing we had it doing was ringing a bell <laughs> yeah but it's tapping in a particular pattern so we found that educational, didn't we? Very educational, yeah. Especially assembling the gearbox and uh, programming the different finger tap rhythms. And I, I thought assembling the gearbox, it gave me a greater understanding of how gears work, you yeah. know, gearing down yeah. a motor. And also um, it's made you familiar with some of the terms. Like terminal cap, mm -hmm. clutch... Shaft, pivot, pivot, yeah, and got to do an electrical join with yeah. the terminal cap That's as right. well. That's right, there was a little bit of simple electrical wiring in there as well. So, yeah, I think it was really educational. So, will this robot head be as good? We'll have to open it up and see. Okay. I noticed that this one's actually got the different components that are included on the back of the box. So here are our instructions. It's got the same safety messages as we got on the motorised robot hand about adult supervision and assistance being required at all times and then we've got a list of the contents so we'll get the contents out of the bag and then check that everything is there and also find out what it, how it refers to each part what names it's given to things okay yeah so first we've got part a which it refers to as the body interesting i can see there's already um, gears assembled within the body this time it could be that this kit is actually focusing on different um, mechanical aspects this time rather than the gearbox it, it could be focusing on different things we'll find that out as we look at the parts i think then part b it refers to as the motor cover it's got some electrical terminals on as well Part C is referred to as the base. What's that thing inside? There's like like a little plastic loop in the middle. You think it's just moulding debris? It's yeah. not. There's no purpose to no, it. No, it's not important. Then D, we have eye frame. That looks like it's meant to hold the eyeballs, doesn't it? Mm. Because this has got um moving eyes and a moving jaw, mouth, and a moving mouth. Yes. Right. Then we have E, got a battery door. Then we have F, obviously the motor. This look, this looks like the same motor as used in the. I think it is, yeah. It's the, the same type one. of motor, and it's also pre-fitted with uh, what we now know is called a worm, worm gear, gear from assembling the yes, uh, we'll robot from, hand. Yes, yeah. I learnt that from the robot hand assembly. So next we have G, which is referred to as slider right next we have h which is slider left next we have parts i and j i right and i left next we have k jaw cover then we have l upper jaw then we have m lower jaw then we have n cover right and O, cover left. And finally, we've got the small components in this little bag. We've got P, two terminal caps. Q, two cam wheels. R, 
two pupils, so they must go in the centre of the eyeballs. Mm. And finally, eight screws. And we have eight screws this time. They've not given us an extra one. They give us an extra one last time for some reason. Oh, the robotic hand kit. Yeah. yeah. So looks like everything's present and correct again in this kit. I'm interested in this component, cam wheel, because I've it's heard... It's a new one, isn't it? Mm, I've heard about cams before. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have a clear understanding of them. I think it's something that when it rotates, it puts a wobble into something. Okay, well, I'm sure this kit will um, make it clear what the cam wheel does when uh, driven round by uh, the gearbox. Um, and that's I think that's one of the points in these kits, isn't it? You, you, get, you get to know what these um, mechanical um, components do when they're assembled together. So let's start having a look at the assembly instructions. It is recommended that you apply some lubricant to the joints or moving parts when assembling the product. This helps to reduce the friction and enhance the mechanical performance. You may use cooking oil or lotion for this purpose. In the instructions, the water drop symbols indicate the areas which may require lubrication. So I've put a little bit of sunflower oil in a cup with a fine paintbrush. And looking at the first part of assembly in diagram one, we can see that we need to put some lubrication on the worm gear. Slot the motor into the body with the connections for the wires facing upwards. Check that the worm gear on the motor interlocks with the gear inside the body. And in diagram two, we can see that we need to lubricate a part again. Slot the lower jaw onto its pin on the body. And in diagram three, we need to lubricate three parts. Install the jaw cover into the side of the body. The pin on the cam wheel should fit in the upper slot on the cover and the arm on the lower jaw should fit into the lower slot on the cover. Diagram 4. Install the motor cover, making sure that the black wire from the motor comes out from underneath and that the red wire on top is fed through the slots in the motor cover. Secure the cover with three screws. Diagram 5. Put the red wire from the motor and the red wire from the battery case into one of the terminals, making sure that the bare metal of the wires touches the metal of the terminal. Secure the wires with a terminal cap. Repeat with the black wires from the motor and the battery case. Diagram 6. Push the cam wheels onto the rectangular shafts on either side of the body. To make the robot's eyes move in the same direction, install the cams with their pins in the opposite direction. Placing the pins in the same direction will make the eyes move in the opposite direction. So next we've got diagram seven, and we can see that we need to put lubrication on this part. Install the slider right over the cam right. The pin on the cam fits into the slot on the slider. Ensure that the slider sits in between the highlighted area on the diagram. Diagram 8. Place the cover right over the slider and onto the slot on the body. Secure it in place with two screws. Diagram 9. Repeat step 7 with the slider left. Diagram 10. Repeat step 8 with the cover left on the other side of the body. Diagram 11. Install the upper jaw 
onto the body. Diagram 12. Push the body onto the base. Diagram E1. Eye assembly. Push the pupils into the eyes. Next, we've got to add some lubrication. Clip the eyes into the frame. Check that the frame is the correct way up and that the eyes are the correct way round with the pins on the inside of the frame. Diagram E2, final part of assembly. Carefully slot the frame onto the top of the body. Guide the pins on the eyes into the slots in the sliders. So we just need to put the batteries in now and try it out. <laughs> Interesting. Up and down motion and side to side motion, quite slow, all from a fastly sp a fast spinning motor. I'll just pop it off and uh, put the battery cover on. Then okay. We'll switch it on again. You can see the cam working on the side there. Oh yeah. That's so there's two. There's a two cams. There's, yeah, there's two cams, isn't there? Because there's, there's one up here. There's one cam up there and one down there. That's right. Yeah. But I can only remember putting one in. Because that cam was already fitted, was already fitted on. Right. Ah. Hooray! <laughs> Why do you think it's I flew out? I don't know. <laughs> it's like a, a horror trick, that isn't it? The stand rotates as well. That's oh, wait, it did again, didn't it? <laughs> I wonder why it's I keeps flying up. It's fascinating watching the uh, action of the cams, isn't it? They're all over the place. I think. Oh, that's okay again now. Huh? Yeah, it's okay again. Don't know what it was, mate. Could be just sort of like bedding in, maybe. So we've got cams going round and round and round and producing forward and backwards linear motion. And then this forward and backwards motion it's been translated back into a rotary motion again, isn't it? Rotary yeah. motion? Yeah, the eye's twisting, isn't it? And it's going from side to side. Right. Yeah. So that's going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. But this one's going from side to side, side to side. I was saying to you earlier, what do you think about the idea of trying to replicate the sort of cam mechanism to have a, a moving mouth like that, like a moving bottom, bottom lip. On oh, a Furby, big Furby model. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a possibility, isn't it? It would be nice to try and replicate it, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, it would. I think using this as a basis for making 3D parts, we could do that. What about the gears, though? I've got a big box of gears. We could try and make a beer bo gear box out of that. Right. You've seen that big box of gears. Yeah. You can assemble those on shafts along with a, a worm drive on a motor shaft and uh, make your own little gearbox. It's an interesting idea for a, a moving mouth. Mm. Because as I was saying to you, what you would want to do is control it by a microcontroller. Yeah. And get to play a file and move the mouth for as long as the 
length of the file was that you were playing with the mm. playing on an MP3 mm. player. So you would ju just have the motor on. Yeah. You time it. You time how long you needed the motor on mm -hmm. to fit the sounds that's coming from the file. Yeah. You could actually build a. This is like. Um, the bare bones of a, a model. You could build a model around this, couldn't you? You could have a head, you could do. Mm. so that and make the eyes more realistic, and you could have a, a mouth as well. I don't know what you'd make it out of. Maybe sort of like three um, D printed in latex or something like that. Yeah, it would be interesting. You, know, you could give it a full head face. form. Yeah, mm. yeah, that'd be an interesting project as well. I think though, if you're going for eyes, they're such good eyes that you can get off Thingiverse, the 3D prints. Yeah. That are animatronic eyes running off That's true, servos. Yeah. yeah it's, it's not really worth it. It's not really worth it. No, no, but it I think for a moving mouth, because a moving mouth is so simple, I don't think it, it I think it makes sense rather than mm -hmm. trying to do it with a servo. Try to put your finger in there, it actually exerts quite a little bit of force. <laughs> Reminds me that I'm a gummy ham ham. Yeah. <laughs> it really does. Is that the sort of mechanism they've got in the amagami ham ham or they've got it using a servo? I would think using a servo in the amagami ham ham. It's fascinating to watch this as a demonstration of turning one motion into another sort of motion because yeah. you can hear the motor. Mm -hmm. It's going around very fast, like little electric motors do, and it's just going round and round and round very fast. Mm. And from that fast rotary motion of the electric motor, you've got all these other types of motion. Mm. Um, side to side, slow slide to side, up and down motions. And it's all, all done with cams? Uh, it's all done with cams and, uh, and links. Right, so... I don't know what you would call this mechanism here. This slides backwards mm -hmm. and forwards, backwards and forwards, and it's got a little pegging going off the eye. Mm. It's like almost the opposite of a cam, isn't it? Rotary yeah, motion. Rotary. rotary motion, yeah. yeah. Uh, but all that motion off one little electric motor spinning round. Yeah. And so the power in the electric motor is used to power um, three separate things. Two, one, two, three. Mm. One eye, second eye, and an up and down mouth. Mm. So, and, it's, so that, and it's also distributed into different places, that power, isn't it? You mm. know, here, here and here. Mm. All from one little electric motor. Another reason why I think it would be good to use this sort of mechanism for a moving mouth. Yeah. But use a different mechanism, like using servos for the eyes. Yeah. Is that we wouldn't want everything working off one motor. No, we wouldn't. Because it's two clockwork. Yes, yes. If you've got... Your eyes separate and they're working off servos, mm -hmm. you can get lots and lots of movement in the eyes. And they're independent from and the mouth. And it's independent yeah. from the mouth. Whereas you could all have these... the mouth moving when yeah. the eyes aren't. That's a good point, yeah, because all these all this motion is not independent. Mm. It's all synchronised to one motor. So comparing the head kit to the hand kit, I thought that the head kit was much more involved putting it together. Yeah. It took me a lot longer. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple of things that I found confusing. Mm. I found this here very confusing. The rectangle here. Yeah. And the cam wasn't in that position. Yeah, the uh, yeah, that's right, the rectangle, which is the a drive shaft which comes from the gearbox was um, not in the same position as it was on the diagram. Mm. So it's like 90 de degrees turned. Yeah. And that threw you then? Did it? it threw me because I was thinking, well, do I have to try and move mm. it? Mm. Which you couldn't do, So that it matches without... the diagram. Yeah, and you wouldn't be able to move it because you'd have to put the batteries in and I... turn the switch on and off to get it in that position, yeah. I was unaware that that wasn't important. Yeah that this rectangular slot could be the other way round. You could yeah. turn it mm -hmm. 90 mm -hmm. degrees and it didn't matter. I think you get these small oversights sometimes in the instructions, don't you? And the other thing I found confusing was in this diagram. 
It's got a droplet of oil to go on the calm. That was fair enough. Yeah. That was easy mm -hmm. to see. But it's got a droplet of oil and it's pointing here. And I wasn't sure where it was pointing. Yeah, the, it's really and not that deep. That one on there. I couldn't tell yeah. where I was supposed to put the oil. It's not detailed enough, is it? No. And then you explained to me that the oil wanted putting on the inside here. Yeah, any surfaces that touch and slide against one another. Yeah. And that you didn't have to put the oil all the way down because it would be moved. It spreads out anyway, yeah. Mm. But I couldn't tell that from that diagram. Yeah, I understand that. And yeah. the instructions. Mm. But that was the only problems that I had. As I say, the head one was a lot more involved. For a start, you've got one, two, three pages of instructions. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the hand was just just over a page of instructions. Right. So the instructions were half as long, really. Yeah, yeah. So yes, I would say that the head was more difficult to build than the hand, and it took longer. Yeah. I would say the hand was a lot simpler to mm -hmm. put together. So that about concludes this unboxing, build, demonstration, and comparison. Mm. Would you say they were both two good kits for Christmas presents? I think they're brilliant. Yeah, I do as well. And a good price too. If you decide to buy either of these kits, folks, I'll put a link in the description below to Amazon. And I would be much obliged if you use that link as it helps the channel. But that's it for this video, folks. Hope you found that interesting. useful to some degree. Thanks for watching as always and hope to see you next time.